you know, there's some rationale in the transplant setting that, and, and, and we were a program many years ago that, that actually said you cannot use marijuana. And our rationale was based on, I think, sort of go very real concerns. We were concerned that post-transplant that we didn't know if there was going to be any effect or interaction between mar mar marijuana products, the marijuana, and the immunosuppressive drugs. And of course, our goal with transplant patients is to ensure that we have long-term graft survival and patient survival. So we didn't want to have any potential for the marijuana to interact or cause changes in the metabolism of drugs that might affect their immunosuppressive levels. And there are some data that, that show that depending on the, again, the product, because it's, it's not one thing, marijuana, it's, it's, there's many different uh, components, um, that we've, we were concerned that there could be potentially some uh, drug-drug interactions. Probably not major, but potentially modest, but we didn't want to have any potential issue with um, the patient's immunosuppressive levels and their, you know, being at risk for rejection. So that was one reason. And then the second is that many people smoke the smoke marijuana or, uh, products. And um, there's very old data, but I think still has relevance even today that um, some of the marijuana products were actually contaminated by molds because they're grown in the earth and you know those exi exist, exist in nature. These are natural products. And some of those molds, molds like aspergillus are actually very serious and can be lethal infections in somebody who's immune compromised. So we had, I think we still have very strong feelings that we would like our transplant patients not to use these products because we think there's some potential unknown risks um, and there may be some real consequences to use of products and especially if they're smoked um, and not to mention that there are some good data about you know the risk for lung disease and as activation of asthma etc so for those reasons we really feel there's some health risks and we wanted to counsel against it we still advise patients post transplant to avoid use of marijuana because of those concerns so there's the whole sort of legal issue of like the policies of the program getting on the list but there's some real sort of concerns on the part of clinicians who take care of transplant patients that there are some some concerns about the potential risks to the patient because they're immune compromised and or the interactions with medications that would compromise the graft. So we still would advise individuals post-transplant to not be using. The truth is that um, I think there's still potentially some real, there are going to be, I think in the future, recognized health benefits of, of cannabinoid products. Um, and there's some very interesting data about how it can be used to treat chronic pain. And I think that that's a particular area that I'm interested in given our concerns about um, the escalating use of narcotics, the potential for dependency on opioids and opioid addiction and consequences of that. So I think if we can find potentially safer alternatives where there's not an overdose risk or where there's less um, potential for side effects, I'm all for that. Um, and there's actually a very nice report coming back to the transplant patients where they had a patient who was on narcotics at fairly high dose and they were having difficulty managing the patient's pain and they uh, used CBD products and the patient was able to come off all their narcotics, had very good pain control. And so in that case, it was really a benefit to the patient and to the provider that they had an alternative to use of narcotics. So I think it's an area in which we're really still learning and as more of these become available and more studies get done, I think we'll find that there is a place where there, the benefits certainly outweigh risks, but we're still early days from the point of understanding that. But I, I see in particular the area of pain management where this might be a very um, ha sort of alter an alternative that we'd be happy to support because it would be safer than some of the others that we currently have.